not have original PowerPoints? Is that what's kind of holding you up from the faculty? Yeah, originally, no, I just had PDFs. Okay. But it looks like you have to record the PowerPoints. Okay. So, but, yeah, she did. I think she did say it before the session. And then for you? Okay. Um, I, I have my content objects up here, but what do I do with Next? them? Okay. Yeah. So this, I, I, I know you mentioned that. Last session, and it just totally went in one ear and out the other. Uh -huh. Okay, good. We can, we can totally do that. So I, I may even use yours as an example of, as we do that with the movie. Okay. <coughs> All right, so let me, I just want to make sure that everybody understands your question, which is. Based on the context of this slide, I don't know. I mean, maybe in class she said something, 
but I doubt it. So, so maybe the question there then is to say yes. I, I would like to ask her a question about that. We can have an interaction with her in the tool, or this is something where you could perhaps after class next week say, you know, I was on slide six last week, and here is that image. Can you tell me more about it? So, or it might be such that you ask me a general question, like, you know, I've seen this graph five times. You know, should I be bringing it into the tool all the time? Um, so that's that could be that next question. But the most important thing is that you're going to get to recommending an action for that particular object, telling us and telling yourself what are you going to do with it. And the way that what we have here is in this category of recommending an action. This is, this can be hard to decipher, but I'll explain it to you quick. Permission is is saying we are going to seek permission from the person who this object belongs to to use it. So it, there may have been the name of like a, a student on there or a faculty member. So we're going to go talk to Jeffrey <coughs> Mackey Mason about using that object. You know, and then we'll come back and, and choose a final action once we have a have, a, have an understanding if he, if he says yes or no. The next action might be we're going to go out and search for an object. You know, this is an image of a cell phone. You know, I can easily take or, or go on Flickr and find a, a licensed photo of a cell phone and put it in there because it's easy to replace. Or that might be the same, you know, some landscape of, of mountains or, or any number of objects. So that's oftentimes a really good thing to do. There's the retain permission, which is to say, this object belongs to the faculty member. It belongs to somebody who's provided us with an understanding of how we can use the material. And oftentimes you'll have a, you'll see that either Creative Commons license or a GPL license or, or something to this to the extent there. But anytime that there's a faculty member's content object, you, you choose retain permission. Retain public domain is that is that idea that there's something that indicates that it was created before 1923. Like maybe an image from the Civil War, or it's a you know it's something something that really clearly is, or something that somebody has put in the public domain. And and some of the images that you'll find on Flickr have have or excuse me on Wik Wikipedia will have such a such a notification on the bottom. But that's that's really hard to define sometimes. So but sometimes when it's really clear, it'll be there. Usually the case for public domain is that it's something that was created by the federal government, the U.S. federal Good government. Point. Good point. That's all in the public domain. Yeah. So actually, <coughs> this is kind of an interesting thing. So change.gov, if anyone has been there, that was created before Obama was the president, was, was actually elected. Yeah. And towards the end of the campaign, they decided, okay, we want everything on change.gov to be Creative Commons licensed as attribution only. Um, what became sort of a problem was that once Obama was elected and became the president, all the content that's created for change.gov goes automatically into the public domain. So, so the, the, the Creative Commons sort of attribution license was kind of nullified at that point. But instead what he decided to do was sort of open it to kind of make it a public forum so that anyone who added content would then have to assign it that Creative Commons attribution only license. So now the site is sort of half public domain for anything that's created by the federal government, but then the other half is all Creative Commons attribution only for stuff that people contribute. Yeah. So, yeah, so if you see something that, that comes from a federal government site, such as the, the NIH or you know, the National Archives or potentially like the Library of Congress, it's not necessarily that that content is open, but the majority of the time it will be. Sometimes they draw sources from sources outside their own collection, or that it's like at the NIH. There's actually there's a different um, group of illustrators that sometimes will create medical images that, that actually don't belong to the NIH, but they're contracted out. So even though it appears there on the site, it, it, it sort of you have to navigate it a little bit to figure out if it's actually public domain. If you have any questions, though, that's where you, you would definitely say ask describe too. There's this retain copyright analysis section, which basically goes to say, if there's any question that you have about a material and don't know what to do with it, like you could probably, you know, mark it as copyright analysis, and that gives us it gives us the best indication that you need help with it. But what the category really is for is to say that, you know, this is a graph, and what I know about graphs is that they're really basic representations of, of, of data. And if, if I had that data, and Matt has that data, and you have that data, and we both use the same tool to graph that data, it's going to look exactly the same. So maybe what you're saying to yourself is, I'm not sure that this object actually merits concern because there may not be copyright in, in that. But what, so what you're going to say, is, I, I think you should got you guys should take a little bit more of a closer look at this and, and, and help me. Make <coughs> it. And 
some of that might come out inside of the quotes, uh, stuff that we're looking at with a lot of the material that Jen and David are working on, where it's, it's simply a quote from someone. That's a standard fair use in any, in any sort of practice where you know, you're quoting somebody, you're commenting on what they've said. You know, it's in there, it's a small snippet of something. It's not competing with the original document in which that appears, unless it's potentially the entirety of a poem. But that's, that's exactly where you'd put it as well, sort of saying it's a, it belongs in that box. And there's, there's other reasons why things would fit into that. And, or, or what other things stand out for you guys in terms of what, what, what you want to see people thinking about as they drop stuff into copyright analysis? Didn't you say more about fair use before and about the four factors? Um, so the four factors, you, should we cover that now? Do you want to cover fair use? <coughs> Yeah, I would. I would say let's hold off on that because fair use is pretty complex. Well, then I would say screenshots. Yeah. You would also select yeah. retain copyright analysis. Right. So yeah, let's start with that. So basically, things like screenshots, book covers. Um, you know, here, here's a good slide that will actually give you. I think it's. So th on Friday, I'm going to be talking to some law students. Um, we're going to be building a case book for you guys which will basically help you say, I'm looking at this image. <laughs> does, it more, does it look like this image? Or does it look like that image? And if so, what action should I take to sort of clear it or recommend an action? So here's an example of this category of copyright analysis stuff. Where, I mean, and again, th there can be any number of things that would fall into this, but if you saw an image of the New York Times as a screenshot or the cover of Michael Jackson's awesome thriller album or Dr. Seuss or... Um, you know, any number of these things could also be put in there. Um, you know, an X-ray. You know, it, it, uh, one thing that we will oftentimes say about X-rays is that they don't have enough creative expression to merit uh, the protection of copyright. Even though somebody spent a lot of time capturing that image, it's it's basically a representation of factual information. And that if you took it, and if I took it, and seventeen other doctors took that image, it would look the same. So it's that sort of stuff that comes up. As for the most part, yeah. So th things in SI oftentimes are more media-based. So screenshots, um, book covers. Um, yeah, I think that's, a, that's that's probably enough to start with. Yeah. Well, so on that note, if you have a content object that's factual and it doesn't and wouldn't be protected by copyright, that would also go in the retain copyright analysis. <laughs> right. Okay. So create. That's to say that you know there's an image here that is so simple. <coughs> It, it was drawn by somebody else, but I could easily draw that image. And here's a case, um, I don't know if I still have it open, where it's, I'm working with some students in architecture who um, are working on creating new images for some of these. Um, as you go through, you can see these sort of drawings that appear. What they've done is that they've created, I mean, these, these potentially have copyright. So an image like this, which seems pretty, you know, it's just a drawing. It may, it may actually be something that merits concern. So what they've done is actually gone to cre create new images. And what they actually did instead of drawing it was they, they found a new picture. And so what they're going to say is it's easier for us to create something new and or search for something new than it is for us to, you know, try and get permission from the author to, 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 to use this. Um, and even though the, the faculty member has, has, has cited that source down here, as you can see, it's going to be, it'd probably be pretty hard to go contact Prentice Hall for their, you know, or upper, upper or, you know, the Prentice Hall publishers to get permission <coughs> to use it, so. Yeah, actually, we might expand on that a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, if you look at other open courseware initiatives, they spend a lot of time going out and asking for permission to use images. Um, and, and what they end up with is kind of a, a huge list of don't contact these publishers because they never help us out, and a very small list of these people sometimes play nice. Um, and it's a lot of email back and forth and trying to you know grovel and, and, and get some of these images that really a lot of times don't even have creative expression to be protected or um, could easily be replaced with something else. And so we have said, that looks like a mess. We don't want to do it. So, so we're not going the route of finding permission 
of obtaining those kinds of permissions. And instead, we're focusing on replacing things, on creating new things, on actually doing the copyright analysis and saying, you know what, there's nothing to protect here, we're going to use it. We're going to cite you know, the source, and then we're just going to go ahead and use it. And that's very, very different from what most other people do. And that's based, but not on some sort of radical, like, we don't want to ask for permission. It's more of like, there's a lot of stuff out there that we can use. So let's, let's take advantage of that first and support sort of the, the cyclical nature of reincorporating open things into your content rather than spend trying to convince other people about the merits of open. And of course, they, they work hand in hand. As you, as you convince people, you get new content, you can bring it in. But I think it just relates on the fact that we can, we can oftentimes find replacements for the things that we need and or work really quickly to, to create things or convince the faculty members that they associate with to, to, to sort of allow for the material to become part of it. Okay, so when you recreate a diagram, do you have to cite the original? Like in this case, you've got the... <coughs> like this, this would be the original here. And it came, came from four, page 452 of that textbook, right? Mm -hmm. And he, here's his recreation. It's your question. Does he have, do you have to cite the original? Right. Not necessarily. So this is sort of a pretty basic example. But, but if it were a classic example, you might say, like, this creation modified from you know, somebody else's. But the, the idea should be that this, this should be different enough than the original to sort of be its own, you know, own work that stands on its own. Right. So people wouldn't be like, you know, or did you just copy this person's in the, in the, you know, in the beginning? You know, stuff like, you know, it, it, it's, it's a good practice, perhaps, to cite it. So we might for this for this example, but uh, I mean I, I I wouldn't say that. You wouldn't say that. Mm -mm. Why not? Because you're creating something different. I mean it, it 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 does have some elements that are similar, but but you're not you're not taking something and and, and adapting it, yeah. right? You're not creating a derivative of it, and so what's the reason to point back to the you know an original? So for for all we know. The creator of this new image uh, or diagram could have taken 15 different right. similar images and said, okay, so what are all the different elements here that are going to help me create what I want to create? Sure. So you can't just say it's a direct descendant from this one. That's true. And, and plus that also uh, would cause problems in a court. So if, if the publisher said, hey, yours looks exactly like mine, and, yeah. and they sue you for infringement, <clears throat> if if you say, yeah, I, and I cited you too, <laughs> you know, I, I said, oh yeah, I adapted this directly from you, right. you know, then you're going to have problems. But if instead, you know, your your argument is that, uh, you know, I looked at about 15, 20 different images. I've been in this field for a long time. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. I just created something. Yeah, it's going to look similar to yours because there's really no creative expression. Right. Then that's a much so better what argument. What about the case though when somebody takes an image like this one that's quite complex, redoes it in a way that explains like just the essential elements? Saying, you know, all, all we really wanted to know about was this pathway here. I mean, could we say, you know, adapted from and or, you know, you know, there's more, there's more to this on this sort of more complex drawing that you can find here in the journal. Yeah, I mean, I, I think see that's also. right. Yeah, I would say yeah. see also. I think that's um, but but I wouldn't say that it's a, again, it's not a derivative of it. No, um, oh, yeah, and, no. and and plus, what you're talking about is a process, right. and so this is a diagram of a process. A process has no copy, it merits no copyright. Right. But the, the illustration kind of surrounding the process uh, might merit copyright. And so what you're saying is, what if we just distill this down to the basic process? Well, <clears throat> no one has any, any copyright oh, sure. on that, so. But I mean, all I'm suggesting is that there are times when we may reference <clears throat> the source, and that it, it, should, it should be something that's not like frowned upon because you might be, because oftentimes the person's creating this new one hasn't looked at 15. So it's, it's, it perhaps is more of a, a benefit to us to say, yeah, we, we saw this, but we created something completely different. But, you know, for, for reference, potentially. So, so I don't know, we can, we can. Oh, I was going to say, sometimes it's confusing for people. We actually, I mean, we like these sort of policy <laughs> conversations, but we've only had a, a very small number of people who've actually had to create new yeah. objects. Right. Normally people have been able to search and find replacements. Okay, three more. Commission, we don't really do it, but on a case-by-case -case basis where a faculty member would be like, I really want this image redone, we could probably work, we could work for that, so um, let us know if the faculty member says something like that. Fair use, don't put anything in here. <laughs> It'll just disappear. Uh, it's, 
it's sort of a black hole on, on our on our tool at the moment. So nobody really gets no notified about it. And it's a good argument for things like those passages and quotes. And but if you have a fair use, if you're thinking like, oh yeah, this seems like it fits into the into the fair use argument that we can explain, maybe. Yeah. Next you week. use the copyright analysis. Yeah, use copyright analysis. And then remove and annotate. Don't be afraid to use it. If you're if you look at something on a slide and you're like, you know what? This it's just too complex for us. I mean, an example of that might be. Oops, let me go back to the PowerPoint. Like we we struggled over this thing for a long time. Where it was like, man, uh, uh, does it have enough expression? Yes, no. Like it just if, if if your first recommended action is remove it and annotate, like we'll take a look at it and say, yeah, that's a, that's a good decision. Or hey, no, we could really easily distill this process down into, into its basic components um, by creating something new. But again, don't be afraid to use it because. In the end, a lot of stuff will have to come out, and and that's fine. We can always cite people back to the original source <coughs> with a, with a link to a website or a link to a journal, and and if that's if that's the quickest route to getting this material cleared and up on the website, then that's then that's fine. But the idea is to help. These are basically to, the recommended action is to help you guys make a quick decision about where you think this is going to go. So don't fret about it for a long time. If you don't know, just you know. Send us a note saying you don't know, and then we'll then we'll get on it. Or just make a best guess. Yeah, make a best guess. There is this help me make a random recommended action decision uh, tree navigator, which is Kathleen automated. It used to look like a bunch of flowcharts that you did in 502 or 501, where it's like if this, then go that way. No, do this. You know, so it's something you guys are familiar with. But this is this helps you not have to read the entire thing. The three areas of this, and this is throughout. The whole process. Uh, what we're concerned about is: Does the object itself merit some concern around endorsement? Does it appear that this faculty member is like standing there talking about a product and saying, "You guys should really use this product, and uh, I endorse it, and the and you know, the university endorses it." I mean, that's the issue where we're concerned about: Does it appear as though the faculty member, or would it appear that the university endorses this product via that faculty member's mentioning of that product and or it appearing appearing in those lecture materials. So it's something that you can <coughs> you can assist us in, in getting through. Most oftentimes everything that happens in the class will probably never merit an endorsement uh, issue. So we'll get through it. Unless there's like a picture of Coke on every slide, which right. Can never right. This lecture book. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. But then again the faculty member is entitled to his or her own opinion <coughs> on anything. So you know, that's not something we're saying, well, he mentioned Coke, is that, is that all right? Of course it's all right. It's, it's just a matter of, would the, would the public start thinking that, like, all of a sudden, you know, the university itself says Coke is the best product, even though that's just a faculty member's opinion. Copyright is the next stage. We, of course, need to clear copyright, and, and that's what we're doing mainly with the content clearing tool in ORCA. And then there's this last concern around privacy, which is to say, if there there are students that appear in a, you know, in a picture or names that appear on, on assignments, um, we really have to be cautious as people provide, you know, basically providing that information to the public. So if you see those sort of things, we're going to have to take note of them. And then the last part of the tool is that when, when you go through this navigator, it'll provide you with an action to take. So if we do it for the object that you had in your, in your uh, and here, so we're dealing with this thing, which is table. <laughs> well, I'm hoping this will be quick. Oftentimes it's intimidating to run through this and see that there's like 20 questions, but it should go quick. So endorsement, does it contain a word, a logo, a slogan, a shape? Nope. Does it contain the face of a, you know, a famous individual? Nope. Okay, so we just cleared endorsement. We're on the copyright. Congratulations. We should actually have an animation that says like, yeah, okay. <laughs> so does it contain information indicating that it's in the public domain? It didn't, I mean, it didn't say anything like that. I mean, no. Was it created by the instructor? We don't know. Probably, but. So let's, yeah. let's, let's side on the, or err on the side of caution and say no. Does it appear to be created by other staff? Uh, we don't know. So let's say no. Is it one of the following? A fact, an opinion, an idea, a concept, a principle, a description, a representation of the process, a discovery, a reference? <coughs> this is, this is like the heart of, the heart. <laughs> so. It's, it's, it's a, this is where it, the nuance of copyright comes in in this phrase. But it's basically to say, is this a very basic, is, is this like the essence of the 
creation. So anybody could take a con like the idea behind something is not copyrightable. Like the process by which you do something is not copyrightable. So like I make how to make a sandwich. Like take a piece of bread, put the, you know, put the sandwich together. I mean, I, I, anybody can have any number of ways of making a sandwich. But it's the way in which I then capture that process that's that's copyrightable. I could use you know some awesome pictures of sandwiches and like take my own pictures of the turkey and put that together in a way that then is, is, is a description of the process. But the process itself is, is not copyrightable. So if it were just words on a page or some very simple description from if you do X and move to Y and Y goes to Z, you're, you're, you're getting to the idea almost. So that's what this question is supposed to sort of get you to think about. Is it, is it, is it really the, the base of what other people could build from? There's other ways that you can describe this, this question. Case, we're gonna say, <laughs> I want to say yes here. Well, let's go back to the example. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it looks. Oops. And it, why don't you explain why that? Yeah, can you, yeah, can you magnify it? Oh, yeah. you still can't. So, when you're looking at tables, the first thing that I do is I say, okay, what's the table of? Is it a table of data, or is it a table of? sort of textual descriptions or just are they single words? Like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, there's sort of a gradient, right? So if it's data, data is fact, right? And clearly as that question said, if it's fact, there's no copyright. Um, but if, if we kind of move towards, okay, well they're words and maybe there's just one or two you know, words in, e in every field, that's still kind of on the edge of data. And so that's probably, again, no copyright. But when you start getting into, okay, each, each element of the table has a paragraph of text, right? Then we can start to say, okay, that paragraph might actually uh, merit copyright protection. And so while, although it's a table, uh, that's, the, that's the format that the text has been placed into, rather than paragraphs and you know, that kind of structure. So, so th this is actually a really interesting example. Yeah. Well, I would add, there's one step I would do before that. Um, you see whether or not, you go back to the PowerPoint and see if that instructor created the table, or if it's a screenshot. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, we, we sort of. You did that already? Well, we, we went through that question of, okay. did the instructor create this? And we said we didn't really know, slash no. Right. So, we moved on. So but yeah, you, you're right. That That is the first thing to figure out, because if the instructor created it, then. You know, we're just not going to analyze the copyright. We're just going to say we've got permission. So let's say no in this because there are there's a significant amount of text within that object that might merit <coughs> concern. Yep. So is it an illustration, artwork, graph, copy, with a copyright notice, the person? No. Does it appear by uh, created by a person or a company other than the educator? Don't know. So. <laughs> Ask the faculty about this. <laughs> like, it's a long way of saying it could easily be solved by you know sitting after class. Um, let's say we went back and undid the last action. Um, it's gonna be, uh, you can see here search or create. You know undo the last action. If we have you know let's say you know here we jump onto privacy for instance. So now we just cleared the copyright stage. There's nothing to worry about. We could use it. That's what that would suggest. So from the information other you know can you identify? Identify somebody, no, and in that case, it'll say, you know, retain it. And if it is, and you have to look close at the number here. If the, if the answer to that question was yes to 16 or yes to 21, there's a different recommended action there. So, in this case, it was yes to 21. And then the action would be retain permission. So then, you jump to the tool, and you, under this uh, status tab, choose what it had said. So, what we're going to do, because it said, Ask the faculty is it's go here and, and basically leave this blank for them. Okay. So, and then once you ask, then you'll come back in probably selecting retain permission because again it's faculty training. Okay. All right, so that's one tab. That's one tab, and I know that took like a half hour. It, it doesn't have to, <laughs> and it shouldn't. The next tab is information, and so here's where we need to say what is this? This is a screenshot. Is it a chart? Is it a graph? In this case, we'll put it into the chart. You guys agree? Okay. Where does it appear? It's on 
six citation we don't know yet. The next tab is is copyright copyright status it still remains unknown. Don't worry. The thing I want to say here is don't falsely assign copyright just because you know you think it might be copyrighted. We can't. We don't want to make just as we don't want to make claims about no copyright. We don't want to make claims about copyright. So it's it's sort of, it, I guess that's the same way of saying the same thing. It's just we don't we can't know if something is actually uh, is actually copyrighted until we actually find the source. So um, and even in that the source might be attributed to me, but the publisher holds the rights to my material. So um, you know even if it says Joan Durance, Joan may have published it in something else, and she'll she'll let us know then maybe that that you know that appeared also in the journal of, of whatever, and we'll have to contact those people or or work to figure out how to, re to create that in a new way. So with that. You can simply close on or close it, you know, close out of it, and and move on to the next image. And the tool then will keep track of all of all that, so you don't have to worry about finding a save button. Um, I wanted to take a look here at the. I'm wondering why your context image isn't showing. Oh, there you go. It's just. Oh, it's just hidden. Okay, two two things that I should mention though when you're going to fill out this metadata. And I know that you can, you can choose when you when you use the snapper tool. Make sure you just have a number in there. If you have slide five or page five or anything else aside from the number, it won't show up. The other thing to watch here is that there are two things. There's the original context, or excuse me, content object, and then there's a potentially a replacement <coughs> content object. So if you found something new for it to replace this, or created something, or or had, this is the tab that you're going to want to work on, um, and that's green. So. <laughs> Replacement will always be in green. Um, so if you're in gray, just, just take note of the fact that that's for the original object. Um, and if you did upload an image, there's a, there on that image itself, there's a, there's also status information, copyright, that sort of stuff there. It'll have to be filled out. So, but it'll be green. But it will be green. So, how many more images do you have in your lecture to bring in? Are, is this, these are the two. This is just okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's. This might be probably the same question, having to ask for, okay. um, you know, where this came from. So, in which case, you can you know, grab that knowledge from her, and then we'll come back and return it to the tool. Okay. All right, but that's the, so. I'm, I'm, what I'm, I, what I want to make sure David has here is is a better understanding of. Did, does that help you, like, where to go next? Yes. Or even where to where to bring stuff in. But do you need the original PowerPoint slides for? So we yeah, I was actually sending you an email about that. <laughs> I have them from Chuck. Cool. We can work from PDFs. The thing about that is just editing that PDF can become a hassle um, when, when we go back into, into the lecture. So um, it's not that it's impossible, it's just it's a headache. And the idea of we want our end users to be able to get the PDF and then take the image out of there and, and put it wherever they want to, in addition to downloading not only the context images and the content images, but also the also PowerPoint but we're still working on what the best format is, but we know the PDFs are just a, a bit too restrictive. So if it's the only thing that you can get from your faculty member, though, then we'll have to work from there. I know in the case of Chuck, he's doing keynote presentations, which can sometimes not convert to uh, PowerPoint that, that good, so we can, or that well. So we can, you know, work to potentially create PDFs out of them, but then we, you know, <laughs> create PowerPoints out of them. I don't know. So there, there might be an intermediary step there that we'd have to go through, but I'm not I'm hoping no. that we can You still don't have the suite, the Office suite to edit um, stuff. Good You're good to go now. Okay. All right. Other general questions, or else, I mean, eventually, I think we should just. What I'd like to do is break down and just work with each of you guys as as the groups that we're in. And I know Greg's not here, but I'll, I mean, you can team up with some of us to work on that um, and just see where the materials are at. And if, if there's any other sort of resistance from faculty, or not not to say resistance, but just sort of questions that faculty have or questions that you have. Um, but yeah, for the people who came in later, are there any other ge general questions about what's going on in the process? Or anything from you guys? Susan? <laughs> you said what else is on there? Um, it's a heavy agenda. That's, that's huge. Walk through our instruction center. Hmm. I think we just did that. Yeah, we just did that. All right. Um, 
I, I, what I'm trying to figure out is it, I, I do want to focus <coughs> quickly, though, back on the on this um, task list. Because everything we need to know is really in here. Um, it's, it, I, I, if you guys have suggestions about how you'd like to see this different, let us know. But it sort of evolved from a lot of this sort of text, which appears here. You know, like do this, do that sort of stuff to at least at least providing you with a better consolidated overview of the process. And it see, I think it seems a lot bigger than it is. But again, I'll say that, like once you do it one or two times, it becomes pretty, pretty easy to do and to remember. Um, so I think it's just through practice that a lot of this stuff will be ingrained. But if there's ever questions, the best place to turn first would be this. Um, and then if it still remains unclear or it's not working, definitely obviously talk to us. So, or talk to us first and 